scheduled to make a campaign appearance in Lafayette on Saturday. He's expected to land at Lafayette Regional Airport around 4 p.m. Saturday afternoon. While in Acadiana, the president is expected to sign into law the recently passed Federal Energy Act. The bill by Louisiana Senator J. Bennett Johnston calls for greater energy efficiency and increased use of natural gas. Vice President Dan Quayle was scheduled to visit Lake Charles this weekend, but his trip has been postponed until next weekend. Campaign organizers did not want Quayle stopped to conflict with the president's bill signing in Lafayette. Democrats are also working hard to win votes in Louisiana. The wife of Governor Bill Clinton will be in New Orleans over the weekend. Hillary Clinton will make an appearance before the Tulane University Boston College football game. Mrs. Clinton will be speaking on the concourse of the New Orleans Superdome at 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Now, Mr. Clinton is wrapping up his tour of western states with one more appeal for people who usually vote Republican. In a rally at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Clinton said he knows a lot of westerners can't imagine voting for a Democrat for president. But he said in times of change, Americans have to go beyond the bounds of party. President Bush says he has the original recipe for the presidency. Ideas, experience, and character. Bush told a crowd of students in London, Kentucky, that he knows Colonel Sanders started his first Kentucky Fried Chicken just a few miles away. And he said that Democrat Bill Clinton needs to learn something that Sanders knew. The bucket stops here. Bush accused Clinton of waffling on the issues. Independent Ross Perot has been campaigning over the airwaves. His latest 30-minute infomercial aired tonight here on KPLC. But there's news tonight that Perot's hitting the campaign trail in person. A spokesman says Perot will appear at rallies this Sunday in New Jersey and Pittsburgh. Perot's family and his running mate, James Stockdale, may also attend rallies before the election. There's been a major break in the POW MIA issue, but both Republicans and Democrats are denying any political timing. President Bush announced the agreement by Vietnam to turn over thousands of combat photographs and other items that could help hundreds of families find out what happened to their loved ones in the Vietnam War. And today, finally, I am convinced that we can begin writing the last chapter uh, of the Vietnam War. The White House announced it's prepared to provide what he calls modest disaster assistance to Vietnam. 2,200 Americans are still listed as missing in Indochina. Well, local Vietnam veterans are a little encouraged by the announcement, but after experiencing setbacks for nearly two decades, they say they're not getting their hopes up. It's too up. little too late. I mean, it's been over 20 years. Uh, if they're releasing this much at this time, my feeling is that there's no one left alive. Or they wouldn't be doing this. It's encouraging that we're finally getting more information, but it's also discouraging that it's taken so long for them to come across with this information. And uh, I guess our attitude right now, or my attitude right now, is, is caution. You know, are the photographs legitimate? Now, turning to other news coming up tonight, some lessons children learn in school only stay with them till the next test. But area students have learned a lesson this week that will last them a lifetime. Stay with us. You're watching 7 News Nightcast with Russell Kinsall, Cynthia Arsenault, meteorologist Mark Skirto's Pinpoint Forecast, and Tom Woodard with Sports. 7 News is at your service. Here's a look at what's making news around Louisiana tonight. Residents in New Orleans are outraged over the death of a four-year-old killed by stray gunfire. Police are not releasing the boy's name, but say he was hit by a stray bullet from a gunfight outside his apartment. A 22-year-old man was wounded in that shooting. Police have already arrested a suspect. Also in New Orleans, funeral services were held for former District Attorney Jim Garrison. He died of heart failure at the age of 70 at his home on Wednesday. Garrison conducted his own investigation into the assassination of President Kennedy. And a suspected art thief is sitting in a New Orleans jail tonight after being flown in from Vermont earlier today. Michael Muskaluk is suspected of stealing more than 100 artworks, including 60 rare Audubon prints. The stolen art was worth one and a half million dollars. 
Louisiana Attorney General Richard Ayub's office is getting in on all the questions about Agroelectric and its ties to the Public Service Commission. That probe tops our local news digest. A coalition of consumer groups wants the AG's office to look into why the Public Service Commission forgave a $5 million debt that Agroelectric owed. Ayub says no decision has been made yet as to whether or not he'll investigate. With individuals in my office concerning uh, these allegations, we, are, we presently have that under review. We're looking at the allegations and the provisions of the lawsuit that were filed. Uh, and after we've uh, done a complete study on the situation, we will make some sort of determination as to whether or not the Attorney General's office can or should get involved in that particular controversy. No one from Agroelectric could be reached for comment. Soldiers in the war on drugs scored a victory all this week in area schools. The students have been celebrating Substance Abuse Awareness Week, and all the activities culminated today at the Lake Charles Civic Center, where the students throughout the five parish area gathered for a giant rally. The students we talked to seemed to get the message loud and clear. You don't need drugs to prove yourself to anyone. In our night beat tonight, one person is being treated at a local hospital after a Lake Charles police witnessed an apparent drive-by shooting. That was just a short while ago. This information just came in a few minutes ago. Police say members of the neighborhood action team witnessed shots fired from a vehicle in the area of Highway 14 and Progressive Street. The police followed that car and eventually stopped it. Inside, they found one person that had already been shot. Police are now trying to piece together how that shooting began. When it comes to the weather this week, so far, so good. But what's in store for the weekend? Of course, Mark Skirto's up next to the forecast. I think the American public as a whole right now